I mean, she made a great play over street crime mm. in particular, whether it's knives, shoplifting, anti-social behaviour. She says Labour are the party of law and order now. Was there anything in that speech that made you believe that? Nothing. Nothing at all. It was rhetoric, one-liners, uh, basically to get a round of applause, uh, tough talking. Um, you know, she, she actually looked really angry, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, almost demented in the contortionism of her face when she was discussing the riots. Um, it was to get the empathy of the uh, conference and get her rounds of applause. Yeah. What did she actually promise? Nothing. I mean, I've just listened to Danny. Uh, it's all froth. Uh, zombie knives was the first thing that um, uh, Yvonne, Keeper, Yvonne Cooper talked about. It's taken eight years, uh, Ian, for the government, and now this government, to actually define what a zombie knife is. Eight years. Mm. And now they're banning uh, zombie knives. Well, 24 people have been uh, killed with a zombie knife, hundreds uh, if not many thousands have been killed with a kitchen knife and a machete yeah. and hunting knives. Now, today's headlines are zombie knives um, have been banned for possession, selling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's going to achieve absolutely nothing. But that's the headline. What's behind the headline are the many children that are being stabbed to death on the streets of London and Britain and others, parents planning funerals instead of bright futures. Uh, and when Yvette Cooper came in, she said, I'm going to halve knife crime in 10 years. 10 years? 10 years. Half it. What, what, where did she get these figures from? You, you're speaking, Ian, as you probably know, to Britain's lead independent knife crime campaigner. I know the knife policies are inside out. I know it upside down. And I've suggested over the decades, even when I was a serving police officer, what we needed to do. Why didn't Yvette Cooper come in and said, as the Home Secretary, I can see that there is a knife crime epidemic. It kills far too many. It destroys lives and it frightens communities. From day one, I'm going to work to eradicate, not reduce it by 50% over 10 years. I'm going to eradicate it. And to do that, I will immediately impose five years mandatory sentences. Pretty much that for if you carry a gun. Now, you're three times more likely to be stabbed to death with a knife, Ian, than you are to be shot with a gun. Yet, if you're shot with a gun, the minimum starting point is five years mandatory yeah. prison sentence. Yeah. Why didn't she come out with that? That is something we want to hear, and that would start to eradicate knife crime. Why do we have to wait 10 years? And if we wait 10 years, and she hasn't even scratched the surface, she said... Oh, well, that was my aim. Well, indeed. And I don't imagine... I mean, I was really surprised that if you are... If you want to be seen as someone who's going to quickly address problems that she would define as uh, problems that were spectacularly missed by previous governments, then you would try and avoid the words 10 years in, in terms of your aims. Uh, because the moment she said that, it, it sounded like there was no um, credible policy at all. Well, as a Home Secretary, and I mean this with respect, she appears to be clueless, certainly on knife crime, on policing, mm. on shoplifting, and all of the crimes that blight society. You, you, your previous caller, Danny, was talking about uh, police numbers mm. uh, and police retention and uh, target, normally target, uh, evidence-led stop and search. Well, if we just dealt with evidence-targeted uh, stop and search, uh, the people that are carrying knives, the majority will be missed. When I was in the police, uh, I had that keen eye. I was experienced and over the years, I knew who was walking down the street and the way they looked, the way they acted, or I was driving past when I was on robbery squads and I knew that there'd been robberies in that area. So I'd stop and search them. In this day and age, you almost have to have a statement that particular person you're stopping is the one that was carrying that knife and committed that yeah. type of offence. Yeah. He also talked about police uh, numbers. Ian, there are less people joining the police now uh, than, than are leaving. More people are actually resigning and leaving policing. They have no faith. And we're talking about stop and search. Let me tell you the raw mm -hmm. figures. 
since 2009, there were 1,000, or sorry, 1.5 million stop and searches. Last year, it went down to 500,000. Tomorrow, I'm attending a Met Police discipline hearing of two officers who did a stop and search. They were cleared by the Met, but mum complained to the independent officer police complaints. For two years, their lives have been destroyed. I'm hoping that by the end of the week, they will both have been exonerated. One has already resigned, and the other one is an outstanding officer in charge of a robbery team, an oh. advanced driver, highly commended, and even the Met, the mayor of London commended him, or commended him because he disarmed a man armed with a, sh a gun. Are these the types of people that should be put in through discipline hearings, or the ones that we need to? Was this over? This was over stop and search uh, sensitivities, was it? That was exactly what it was. And just to finish off with, uh, Ian, shoplifting, it's an epidemic. Yeah. It costs over £2 billion a yep. year. 1,300 shop staff are abused or assaulted a day. Mm. Not a month, not a year, yep. a day. The police rarely ever turn up. Hardly anybody's arrested. Hardly anybody's put before the courts. What did, what did this government do as soon as they came into power? They have released thousands of people even earlier than they should have been released. Yeah. And most were sent to prison because their crimes were so serious or so persistent that society needed protecting from them and they needed punishing. In, indeed. And as, as you know, Norman, yeah, the fact that they went to prison in the first place would have meant that previously they'd had lots of non-custodials and that didn't work. So, listen, Norman, we could speak for longer. We will speak again on this. I cut in for no other reason than time. He's Norman Brennan.